So I really thought the first section of the book talking about catching lizards was pretty interesting. It's like the guy's like, why do lizards not move in cold weather? Um, and I don't know if anybody heard on the news the lizards falling out of trees in Florida. It's kind of applicable. Okay, so it's like, why does that happen? Well, what, what he determined was, oh, when it's really cold, their blood is not moving. They're not moving. They're cold-blooded, so they're not going to die. They just kind of go dormant. So what, how does their metabolic rate, so their rate is temperature dependent. All right, so the first person to actually measure um, rates of a reactions was this guy. He's German. He's not on the test, but he determined, if you know how to be here, please leave. Is the first guy that determined if you take sucrose and add an acid to it, it's going to break down into glucose and fructose. If you're not interested in biology, you don't care about that. But, so what is the rate of a chemical reaction? It is how fast a reaction is occurring. Defined as, we're going to, I'm going to give you several ways today to define different things, pick the one that works for you. Remember, I can follow your math. All right, so the rate of the reaction is the negative change in concentration, and here you'll be glad to know our concentrations are always going to be in molarity. Other concentrations are not coming back for a while. <coughs> So the negative change in the concentration of the reactant divided by the change in time. So speed. Change over time of molarity. So you can do it as negative delta reactant over time, or you can do it as um, concentration of the reactant at T2 minus the concentration of the reactant at T1 means the same thing, T2 minus T1. You will not be using calculus. If you want to use calculus, totally fine, not required uh, to do these. Now, let me get into, uh, make sure you understand the notation bracket means concentration. So whenever you see something in brackets, that means concentration. It means I'm, I'm going to give you a number and you automatically put molarity on it. So when I write A in brackets, I mean the concentration of substance A in molarity. So when you plug and shove, you're going to put molarity in there. Brackets mean concentration. on. You go, why is it negative? So what happens? Which side of an equation are the reactants on? The left. They're on the left. So we go from reactants to products. As we go from reactants to products, what's happening to the concentration of the reactants? If you're going down, they're becoming products. So you have less reactants, more products. Yes? We remember this? Okay, good. So, the concentration of the reactant is going to decrease as the reaction progresses. So, their concentration is decreasing, so that is negative. Our rate is defined as negative. So, when we have the negative of a negative, what do we get? Positive. positive. Makes the overall rate of the reaction positive. So when we're talking about kinetics, negatives mean something. In thermodynamics and physics, they only mean direction. And if you haven't had physics, they mean the opposite thing. I'll remind you again, you're going to hate me, but that's okay. All right, so you can also express your rate as a function of the product concentration. What 
happens as you go across the reaction to products. You get more of them. So the concentration is increasing. So you keep the positive sign because the concentration is increasing as the reaction progresses. So if you're on the reactant side, you do what you got to do to make the rate positive. On the product side, it's already positive. You should never have a negative rate of reaction. All right. Now, in order to have a single rate for the entire reaction, it's a shame Nick isn't here today, you have to have the stoichiometric coefficient. What does that mean? Yes, what does stoichiometry mean? It is math. It means you have to have a balanced equation. Your equation has to be balanced. Who thinks I'm going to give you balanced equations on the test? Maybe a few. Hope. Most of you hope. The reality is, is, is I may not. I will tell you to balance it, but I'm, <laughs> combustion ones are a little complicated. Okay, so now we're going to be dealing with generic reactions a lot here. So capitals, capital letters are the actual substances. So these are going to be your reactants and your product. Little letters are the coefficients. It'll make more sense when we plug it in, but if you like the generic formula, here we go. All right, so the rate of this reaction is all equal. So it is equal to negative 1 over little a times the change in the concentration of A divided by time. That's an A, not a 9. Ignore my bad handwriting. So it's negative because A is a reactant. Same thing for B. Over B, change in concentration of B over change in time. What happens to the sign when we get to the product? It's positive. So 1 over little c, change in concentration of c, change in time, other product, little d, delta d, delta t. If you run the math, all of these should come out to the same number. They may vary a little bit depending on how you round, but you will get the same answer. So let's try it out. Everybody get that ready? So if we're taking gaseous hydrogen, gaseous iodine, and making hydroiodic acid, starting with hydrogen, our rate according to hydrogen is going to be, does it have a coefficient? No, I mean, it's one, so you don't have to worry about it. All right. Is it going to be positive or negative? Negative. Concentration of hydrogen over change in time. You got to know the difference between reactants and products here. Now with iodine, is it positive or negative? Negative. All right. And do we have to worry about a coefficient? No. All right. So negative concentration iodine, concentration and time, change in time. This is not high and it's not Hawaii, it's hydroiodic acid. Okay, is it positive or negative? 
Positive, because it's a product. Products are positive. Memory device. All right, do we need a coefficient? Yes. What is it? It's one half. It's one half. Yes. Change concentration over change in time. Now, obviously, you can crush it all together and it's fine. But if you, you can make one fraction out of it. I'm not going to be upset about it. So far. Okay. So it's basically always negative until you move up. Rea individual reactants, yes, because their concentration is decreasing as the reaction progresses. You're using more reactants to make more products. So, like, if you think about related rates, it's like the reactants are the funnel. The products are like the barrel. Okay, now we can do the average rate of reaction. So for any time interval, calculate the change in concentration over time. If you can get the slope of a line, you can do this. It's not hard. One of the reasons this package is so long is because there's a lot of really long tables like this. All right, so let's look at a few things here. When we start the reaction, this is for the, sa for the same reaction that we were just doing. So this was H2 plus I2 to 2HI. So this is a rate scheme based on the concentration of hydrogen only. So you usually measure, you know, one or the other. So here we start, our concentration is one molar. At different time intervals, as time progresses, you can see the concentration of hydrogen is decreasing. So it's telling you this is the concentration change from this, this time interval, in these 10 second intervals. So here's the rate. So change in concentration is negative, makes the rate positive. What do you notice about the rate as the reaction progresses? It's decreasing, yes, so it slows down. As the reaction is nearing completion or equilibrium, we're not there yet, the rate is going to slow down. Because if you think about a concentration gradient, there's not as much of a change. Instantaneous rates of reactions. Here, we're not gonna do this very much if you want to. So you can calculate the slope of the tangent line. This will not be on the test at any point, or you can take the first derivative. I'm not going to give you a test on that. No. Not everybody has had calculus. It's not a requirement for this class. All right. But yeah, so it's like if you can calculate the slope of a line, you can you can do this. But I don't we're not really going to be determining rates graphically other than maybe on a homework problem. Because there's much more fun ways to do it. We'll do that in lab, but. Okay. Now, here's our reaction. Three reactants, two products. Over a 10 second interval, the concentration of iodine drops from one molar to 0.868 molar. Calculate the average rate. More likely test questions. I haven't even started writing that. But anyway, note to self. All right, so let's calculate the average rate of the reaction in this time interval. So which reactant are we dealing with? Yeah, this one. Okay. So we're dealing with um, the iodide ion. 
Okay, so what is our little formula here? So our rate is going to equal positive or negative? Negative because negative, it's a reactant. Do we have a coefficient here? Yes, it's one third. Change of concentration, I minus, change of time. From here, plug and chug. All right. Let's see, this is our um, initial, this is our final, or whatever, two and one, I, it doesn't matter. So negative one third times uh, 0 0.868 molar minus one molar. What's our time interval? Seconds. That's a 10S not 105. The order that you put in your calculator doesn't really matter. Include units, units are our friends. Zero, zero, four, four. Yeah. So it kind of goes along when you think about speed. Instead of meters per second, it's like molarity per second. So capital M. Not lowercase m, that's meters. Capital M molarity. Okay. All right, now let's use this information to determine the rate of change in the concentration of hydrogen during the same time interval. So here we go. If we have our rate equals, look at hydrogen. Is it a reactant or a product? It's a reactant. So what's the sign? Negative half because there's a coefficient of two. Change concentration of H, change in time. So this is asking us now, this is asking us to solve for delta H over delta T. Do we have delta H over delta T? Yes, it's right here. All right. Don't need that okay. because you don't need that because it's leaving time as a variable here. But yes, time would still be 10 seconds. Okay. So it's just wanting to solve for the whole thing. Don't make it more complicated than it is. <coughs> so if you want to go ahead and rearrange it algebraically before you plug it in, go for it. I'm not a fan of that, but I'm not mad at you for doing it. Um, I'm going to say 0 0.0044. One half. So all we do is multiply by what? Negative two. So times negative two times negative two. So negative zero point zero zero eight eight. Does this answer make sense? the right answer so yes it's, we're we're calculating the rate of change of hydrogen so it's negative which is good because the change in concentration of hydrogen should be negative because it's a reactant so the concentration should be going down same so, interval of time yeah, okay. else lost confused don't suffer in silence are the same. 